So welcome to another laboratory video. This one is appropriate for grade 12 chemistry or for an AP chemistry class where you're studying solubility equilibrium. We're going to determine the solubility product constant, the KSP value, at room temperature for silver acetate. Silver acetate is a moderately soluble salt, actually should have a pretty large KSP relative to some other salts, um, and we're going to determine that in an indirect way. So silver acetate should be a white powder at room temperature, uh, but we actually didn't have any in the lab. It's an expensive salt, and we didn't have any on the shelf. So what I did this morning was I took a solution of silver nitrate, 0.1 molar, so the silver nitrate has silver cations dissolved in it, and then I added to that some sodium acetate. So if you think of a double replacement reaction, silver nitrate and sodium acetate, one of the products would be silver acetate. And because silver acetate is really not that soluble, there was a precipitate that formed as I mixed those together. I let the precipitate settle to the bottom of the solution, and then I filtered it by vacuum filtration, and this is what I ended up getting, about one and a half to two grams of silver acetate. Now, as I mentioned, it should be a nice white solid. This is a little bit gray, so I have a suspicion that it might have some silver metal actually precipitated in there as well, um, but this will suffice. So I'm gonna take the silver acetate, it's a little bit impure, and I'm gonna add that to a bottle, and I'm gonna create a saturated solution. So I've added it to a 500 ml bottle, I'm going to add about two or 300 milliliters of distilled water. And we will shake this up to create a saturated solution. I'll shake it for several minutes and then I'm going to let it sit. I'll shake it again. What I need to have is a saturated solution, which is at equilibrium for the silver acetate. Okay, it should not all dissolve in there. So I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to make the solution saturated and we'll come back. All right, so I confess that I had to add a little bit more of that silver acetate reclaimed to create a saturated solution in the flask. If you look carefully, you can see in the bottom of the flask there is some white powder. So there's some undissolved silver acetate sitting at the bottom. And now the saturated solution of silver acetate is above, and we have almost 350 milliliters of the saturated solution. What I'm going to do now is filter it. I'm going to do a vacuum filtration. I've got a piece of fine filter paper. I'll put that in my Buchner funnel. Then I'm going to wet that to make it stay. We'll press down. We want the filter paper to lay flat in the funnel. Get rid of any excess distilled water. Okay, put that onto our filter flask. I'm going to turn the water on so you're going to hear some water rushing. So now we've created a vacuum in the flask. I'm going to take the silver acetate solution, which is saturated, and we're going to pour this through the funnel and collect the saturated solution underneath. So I'll pour it slowly. You can see the vacuum in the flask is creating low pressure and air pressure is pushing the saturated solution through the filter paper. I don't want any solid silver acetate to be in the solution. I want just the saturated silver acetate solution down below. All right, so there we go. I've got a little bit of this solid material left behind and it's got that gray color, so that probably includes some of those impurities. So now we're gonna let that vacuum filter just for a few more minutes, get through everything through there, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I've collected the filtered silver acetate saturated solution in the vacuum flask. I'm going to pour that into a graduated cylinder so that we can see exactly what volume of saturated solution we have. 
pour that in. We said it was around 350 milliliters, just looking at the beaker, but of course, or sorry, at the bottle, but you'd never use the markings on a bottle to measure things accurately. So looking at this at eye level, holding it steady, I should probably leave it on the bench. As I look at eye level, you'll want to record this volume. So we have 340 milliliters. 340 milliliters of saturated solution of silver acetate. So we've collected 340 milliliters of the saturated silver acetate in the graduated cylinder. What we're going to do next is take a piece of copper wire. I've got it coiled up here. I'm going to find its mass. So you're going to want to record the mass of the copper wire that I'm using. And I'm going to take the saturated silver, uh, silver acetate solution. I'm going to pour it into a 400 milliliter beaker. All right, so get it all in there. Remember that volume, 340, 340 milliliters of the saturated silver acetate. We're going to take the copper wire and we're going to place this copper wire into the saturated solution. Now, if you think about this, there's going to be a chemical reaction occurring. Can you classify the reaction? Copper metal will react with the silver acetate solution. As it reacts, there'll be a color change as, as it sits over for a while. There'll be a precipitate forming as well on the surface of the copper wire. So let's put that in. I've got it just long enough that it should stick out the end of the solution so the copper wire is not fully immersed. Okay, you can see that there's some wire sticking out at the top. And I'm going to let this sit and we'll come back in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, and the reaction will be finished. All right, so it's day two of the experiment to find the KSP value for silver acetate. I have left the solution overnight. You may recall that it was a colorless solution of saturated silver, nitri uh, silver acetate to begin with. We put that piece of copper wire into it, and overnight, it's actually been a couple of days, um, the chemical reaction has occurred and I'm pretty sure it's now complete. So in the reaction you notice the solution is now blue. That's because the copper metal has been dissolving. It's been reacting and turning into copper 2 plus ions. Dissolving probably isn't the best term. It's been reacting with the silver ions that were in the silver acetate solution. On the surface of the copper wire, you can see that there's this grayish precipitate. It's, it's loose, you can see it moving around. That is solid silver metal, it's quite valuable. So we're going to take this and we'll give the copper wire a bit of a shake. We're gonna dislodge as much of the silver as we can from the copper wire. All right, so there's still silver attached to the wire but we're going to now try to get all that silver off into the solution. So I've got here some distilled water. I'm going to wash off the copper wire. I may also have to use a little scoop to scrape off as much of that silver as I can and let it sink into the beaker. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to be doing a filtration. So I have scraped most of the silver metal off of the copper wire. You can see there's still some silver attached to the wire. I stopped trying to take it off because some of the copper metal was being dislodged into our solution. So we have kind of two little sources of error there. There's some silver metal that's stuck to the wire. We're going to lose that. But we also got a little bit of copper metal into our beaker with the silver metal. So those two errors may actually cancel each other out a little bit, but they're sources of errors that you're going to want to note. Now I've got a vacuum filtration set up here. You can see this in the video. We have a faucet with a, with a rubber tubing going to a sidearm flask. And then we've got a large Buchner funnel, porcelain funnel, on top of that flask. I've got a piece of filter paper, a circle. I'm going to put that on the balance and I want you to record the mass of the filter paper 
that we see there. So you can see it's 0 0.94 grams is the mass of that filter paper. We'll put that paper into the funnel, and then we're going to use a little bit of distilled water just to wet the filter paper. When you wet it, it sticks to the funnel better, and we'll pour out the excess water. And now we're going to press down. We want the filter paper to cover all of the holes in the bottom of the Buchner funnel, but we don't want any air pockets underneath. So you want the filter paper to lie perfectly flat in your funnel. So that looks pretty good right there. You can see the tiny holes underneath the filter paper. So now I'm going to put that on top of my sidearm flask, turn the water on. We're using Bernoulli's principle, the fast rushing water will create low pressure in the hose, low pressure in the flask, and then air pressure will be pushing down, pushing things through the filter. So that's how vacuum filtration works. So now I'm going to pour my solution. There's a little bit of solid material floating on the surface of it. We're going to pour that slowly into the funnel. Ideally, you'd like it to not reach the edges of the filter paper if possible, but at this point we're okay. I'm just going to go pretty quickly. If it reaches the edges of your filter paper, there is a chance that it can go under the filter paper rather than through. Now I can see a tiny bit of red in the filter right now. That red color would be the copper, which was um, a contaminant, right? We had a little bit of copper was being displaced from the wire. So I'm pouring that in. Most of the liquid is now gone, but we still have the silver stuck at the bottom of the beaker. So I'm going to swirl that up to get the silver suspended. And then I'm going to slowly pour this keeping it in the middle of the filter paper. I'm trying not to let this reach the edge. I don't want any silver going through underneath the filter paper. So I'm going to swirl it again to suspend it. And then I'm going to pour that silver into the filter paper. Suspend it again. And we're going to repeat that process until we've got all of the silver out of the beaker into the filter paper. Now you can see the flask below is, is filling up. When you're doing vacuum filtration, you never want the liquid in the flask, the filtrate, to reach the level of the side arm on the side of the flask. If it gets too high, we'd have to stop vacuum filtering and then we'd have to empty some of that filtrate. So there's no more liquid, but I still have quite a bit of silver metal stuck in the bottom of that beaker. So I'm going to add a bit of distilled water to this. It's going to do two things. It's going to help me get that silver out of the beaker into the filter. But the distilled water is also going to wash the silver. Remember that blue color of the solution is because there would be some, let's see, some copper acetate inside the solution. So we don't want that copper acetate to be in our filter. So by washing it like this several times, we're getting only pure silver with a little bit of that copper metal impurity. So I've got almost all of the silver out. Give it one more wash and we're good. So there's no more silver in the beaker and now I can see all the gray silver on the surface. You can see some of it in, in the video on the surface of the filter paper. Now to help the silver dry, I'm going to take some acetone. Acetone is an organic solvent. It's, nail, it's found in some old nail polish removers, but it evaporates very, very quickly. So I'm going to wash the silver metal and the filter paper with the acetone. The acetone is going to evaporate. Right now it's displacing the water. And then the acetone will evaporate quickly 
and it'll help the silver and the filter paper dry more quickly. All right, so you want to use, I don't know, about 5 to 10 milliliters of acetone. All right, so now we're just going to let it run. We're going to let the vac, this is not environmentally friendly. We're wasting a lot of water here. But we're going to let it vacuum filter. When it's dry, we're going to take the filter paper and weigh it again. And then you'll know the mass of silver metal produced. Remember, this silver that we've collected used to be in the silver acetate solution that we started with. It was in the saturated silver acetate solution. So if we know how many grams of silver metal we've produced, we then can calculate how many moles of silver were in the original saturated silver acetate solution. Remember, we had 300 and some odd milliliters, you wrote that volume down earlier, of saturated solution to begin with, and then we can calculate the concentration of silver that was in the saturated solution originally, and then you can get your KSP value. So I've stopped the vacuum filtration. Let me just remove the funnel. You can see what the product looks like in the funnel. You can see the silver metal. You can see maybe little tiny flecks of red. That red would be the copper impurity that's in there. So that's a source of error. But remember, we lost some silver that was stuck to the wire as well. A little bit of silver has reached the edges of the filter paper, so I'm going to have to, when I take the filter paper out of the funnel, I'll have to use that scoop to scrape off, make sure all of the silver is on the filter paper when we weigh it. All right, so I've just taken the filter paper out of the Buchner funnel, um, and I put it on the electronic balance. It is completely dry at this point. You can see what the mass of the filter paper with the dry silver on top it's 2.80 grams. So you can now calculate the mass of silver that was produced. You can use the total volume of the uh, original silver acetate solution to get the silver concentration in it. And then you should be able to calculate the solubility product constant, the KSP, for the silver acetate. Now just out of curiosity, if anybody wants to do a separate calculation, you could calculate the mass of copper that reacted in this reaction. The video the announcements about to go. So here is the we weighed we weighed I think the original copper wire. Now you can see the mass of the copper afterwards, keeping in mind it has a little bit of silver stuck to it. So there's the mass of the copper after the reaction, 2.09 grams. All right, good luck with your calculations.